What's up guys? So finally we're getting the CVC and we got some actual piece of in information how it works in practice and we're already gonna get it in game this week. It's been a little bit quiet in the last month in raid and I have been on my summer vacation as you might know. Actually <laughs> there was supposed to be a video yesterday but of course I screwed up the settings and the video um, the video file wasn't it wasn't corrupted but the video like um how can i explain there was some issue with video let's say it was unwatchable so yesterday's um yesterday's video was screwed i streamed on monday and friday but i didn't make any videos yet but there will definitely be video today maybe even maybe even too because i'm kind of pent up of uh from not making videos Yesterday's session went super well, by the way. I think I gained maybe like 40 points or 50 points. A lot, so... Of course, that, that video is not uh, watchable. Anyway, I'm super excited about the... Uh, the Clan Wars. I think we're gonna do some uh, interesting things. We have some some things planned out for the clan, and today we're gonna strategize about the setups. And obviously, we will know better when we actually see it in the game. But by the time that you see this video, which I'm recording on like Wednesday mo Wednesday morning, and I'll release it on like evening because <laughs> it takes million hours to edit a video like this. But uh, we got the information about the, um, or the extra, the, the second part of the information about the clan was yesterday. So you probably have seen or heard about that video. But they made the system so that you can kind of choose different um, restrictions and buffs and try to strategize the defenses that way. And I think that's that's the best way to do it because. Um, Regardless what you do, obviously, you know, it's gonna be in some level massively paid to win. But the more agency and more strategy there is, it gives people more opportunity to like like try to do better than their account does on average. And I think that's super good and it kind of is how I feel like classic arena used to be back in the day. That's at least how it seems, but we'll we'll see more when we get the actual burst. Clan Wars? I don't know what we even call it, because I would call it CBC, but I guess it's not. Anyway, let's pick Dutchess and UDK. Yeah, I think so. No, let's not... No, okay, too late. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have picked UDK at all. It's good against Sifi, but... Mm, maybe it's fine. But yeah, we're, <laughs> we're gonna plan out a lot about it today, and... Let me open this. So some good old Mountain Dew. There's always some people are that are telling me to not drink soda, and especially Mountain Dew, but it is what it is. So I'm kind of excited about the mechanics of the Clan War system because I, I feel like surely surely I can do well in that. I mean a little bit biased and you know personal. But if you can make hard restrictions and we don't know the full details of it yet but you can put bus on yourself and or the room and restrictions on it that you can only use certain factions and that kind of stuff i think that might be good for all the cons with uh with not the best champion pool but good gear i think that's that's gonna be the way way to go for me how i can make most out of it Need to need to think more about the faction teams, but I think something like, uh, well, I guess many factions can can have it. It really depends what champions you do, but you know the typical ones will be something like Unde undead or night revenant. On on those factions, you have many of the top champions, so those will probably be popular ones. But maybe it's better to think about some more uh, less popular factions with maybe less good champions 
maybe I can make a good team in one of those. But yeah, I hope you guys are excited. I've seen very mixed messages about it. That some people, some people already quit, and some people are considering quitting. We had like one and a half people in the clan that quit. One quit before we knew the details, just the game completely. And another one said that he might quit if the CVC is super bad. But a lot of people are excited as well. It's so nice that Mikake doesn't get locked out. By the way, I never see Vitrius. I'm pretty sure that's his name. You never see that champion. I think he like mostly has like single... He doesn't have a lot of AoE damage. He's one of those that when they are not like relevant or popular, you kind of forget about their kits. I think he has some like single target damage and ignore defense and I think he's immune to lockout or something like that in some conditions, but I don't think it's super practical and he's very squishy. He doesn't have a servability. But can I... Can I still kill the Harimoto? Okay, so far I think first fight were good. Surely he doesn't like do AoE and kill everybody at this point. Yeah, we were good. Anyway, by the way, if, if people, if you come up with good ideas about Clan Wars, then hit me up. I, I guess, yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna make videos about it this week, I'm sure I'll, I'll do multiple ones about it. R right now, maybe I should quickly look it up. The only, only really good, like, big information or pictures about it are in the video that Plario made, because we obviously can't log into it on game and do it. Oh fuck, did I just... Maybe you heard the sound for a second there. Okay, wait. I need to see what he picks too. Oh, we're doing the same thing over... I don't think it's the same guy, but it's pretty much the same setup. I guess this is the way to go to beat me up. Yeah, we're gonna go with Duchess again for the Polymorph, like the last time. Yeah, the, the, the issue here is that I can't really pick Rodos or, <laughs> Rodos or UDK, Rodos or Wukong without UDK, because he already has the like Armands and Harima, and I can't ban the UDK, and if I pick Rotos I'm screwed. I could go, let's, okay, let's do different than last battle, but I don't think this goes well. If I go with something like Staldos, he can just go with, you know, Double Reviver, or Burst would be like Maritska. If he has Maritska, then it's like un unbeatable, but let's see. Let's go with Staldos and maybe Necret in, in this battle. Oh, fuck. Where is it? <laughs> I lost the raid. Raid that okay there. Fuck. I guess we'll pick the UDK. It wasn't my intention, but I guess we'll do it. Ah, okay, <laughs> we'll have to watch that later. I mean, I wasn't really gonna watch it, I wanted to show the pictures about the restrictions, but I'll do it quickly after this battle. I'll make a separate video about it too, but, you know. But I like the mechanics, I think so far it sounds like Par Parium did well. Also, the biggest teaser is that they didn't give us the information about new the new set, we don't know what it is. We're obviously gonna assume that the rewards or the re new new item set is gonna be insanely good, 
it might not be. Of often, Larium doesn't really seem to themselves like understand what's actually OP and what's like average or not even that good. I wish it was the sweet berry and deflection accessories. You might have heard me talking about it multiple times. I still feel like there's a there's a like totally like a possibility that they might do it at some point from some other source because I think it would make thematically sense and we already got stone skin accessories and protection. They could totally do it for sweet berry and deflection too. We'll see about that, but it's some kind of new set. But the thing is that the issue is that I don't think there's really like that's the only like big reward from it. I think the other rewards were like used in the actual CVC or the clan wars that you get from winning. It will help you in the next battle. If the reward isn't good, it's gonna like kill the content pretty hard. So I do hope that the, the reward or the new item set has to actually be good. I wish it maybe it could be item set that makes you immune to lockout or a polymorph or something like that. Those kind of mechanics would be interesting and I have spoken about them in the past on many videos. As you can see, I always have to deal with like lockout and harima passive and lots of CC and you know sometimes it takes like five minutes before I get my first turn or I don't get any turn at all against the enemy. Well we're we're hardly getting any turns here like we're we're spamming the A1s, not really getting any turns. I don't know if uh, being forced to do A1 really counts as a turn to be- oh, never mind. Now it's already over, I think. Um, hmm. I could proc- I don't think I'm gonna kill a- I think we're gonna- we have to go for the A2. We're not gonna get extra turn, I might regret this. If I did the A2, I think it would kill Sifi, but I don't think it would kill either one of the Nukers. And we don't have Ankara in the team, so I wanted to get rid of the Harma, but we'll see if that goes bad. Uh, the Rotas wouldn't have died from it. I'm like I'm positive about it because Rotas had defense buff and had stolen HP. There's no way and, and it was Harima passive up and so on. There's no way he would have died. And maybe not even Harima. But we're locked out. Can we can we survive long enough to win? The, yeah, we're gonna get uh, slept by the Sifi, and you know Rodos is just gonna one shot us at this point. I think we lost, sadly. Kind of close, but we lost. Wait, what? Why did he not sleep the Staldus? If he weak hits now, okay, he gets another turn. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Yeah. If he has A3, yeah, okay, I'd die, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm easy to counter, I always complain about the same thing. We we don't have enough damage to kill the Rotos. Not not even with defense buff since he's full health and he stole so much health. Oh, almost. Actually, almost. I wasn't even expecting it to be close, to be honest. Okay, maybe if we did a little bit more damage there and... See if he didn't have Sweet Berry, we almost could have won this battle, but no, still not that close. Oh, <laughs> wait, wait, uh, he can still sleep. Ah, wait, 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 can we actually, does he, does he have to add a cast or can he use some, oh my god, some other ability? I don't know if we have enough health to kill that. Can he just kill us? Oh my god, this is so close. I think we still lose. There's no way we can survive it, right? There's no way. He can... We're so low HP. <laughs> Come on. We Okay. We got locked out and he takes double turn. Yeah, okay. Almost. Super close. <laughs> kind of kind of funnily close enough, but you know. I, I hate the Stalus. What can I say? <laughs> I I I'm all, often feel like I'm forced to using him, but I I hate the Staldos. He's not cute enough.
as you can see, it's not like it has like bad gear. The issue is more that I'm, you know, getting locked out and going second and his damage is not that high, so. Okay, let me quickly show you. So, I think I'll probably make a separate video about th this on the same day. Might release it maybe before this video, actually. But yeah, so you get these rewards from winning, but you also get them at the start of the battle. And you just use them to upgrade your upgrade and repair your buildings that give you like bonuses and effects. Um, where is it? I want to see some picture about the limitations. Okay, yes, these are those like a boss that you can choose, but then there's limitations on the rooms that you can set as well. Yeah, okay. Only champions from Nures and Union can be used. Again, we don't know all of the conditions. I guess we'll find out about it like today or tomorrow. But this makes it a lot more interesting and maybe like not sure if free to play friendly is the right word, but you know, kind of. It makes it more more strategic, let's say. Everybody's not gonna use the exact same defense teams and you can try to play on your account strengths and weaknesses and so on. And maybe gear is gonna be slightly more important than normal because you can't just use any champions. Oh, finally we got the first pick. Not, not having to face with the Armands often gives us a lot more options because we don't have to ban him in that case. He went, he went with my picks. Those, those were what I was picking. Okay, he's he's really thinking about what to pick against me. Okay, this is kind of unique team. Those are a lot of the champions that I use as well, apart from Grixia, but maybe that too in the future, hopefully. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. He did pick Tormin against Angora, which is kind of a, an odd choice. We don't have immunity, but the Angora passive is still pretty good, and we could pick a second Reviver if we want to. I don't really want to pick Duchess against the Narcissus Tom, since my Duchess is in Bolster. Or do I? I get I could do it. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. I'm just gonna go for the Narcissus ban. And even if he if he picks a second lockout, but probably he's gonna pick like Sifi. If he has Sifi, he will definitely pick it at this point. Surely. UDK, interesting. I really don't want to ban the UDK, so. Um, he is still most likely gonna ban the Arman, so it's not like we can polymorph it. But um, we have double reviver, and we we might just try to kill it through the stone skin, maybe. I don't know if I even should go for that, or you know, I'm gonna be locked out anyway. Probably by the time that I'm <laughs> unlocked out, then you know the stone skin is gonna end anyway. So, but. How much damage can he really do with just 
one Dorvin against double Reviver. I think that's gonna be the ease so that even if I'm locked out and he has UDK against my two single target Nogars, but he doesn't have that kind of damage, I don't think. I mean, he has cooldown reset and ally attack, but even still it's with Dormin Nuker that doesn't have defense buff. T Dormin really needs the buff because his damage is not that high. The A1 is only, <laughs> only a multiplier of 2, which is very, very low. It's, I don't think there is really... Most support champions have much higher multiplier on A1 than Dormin. By most, I mean like pretty much all of them. Probably there's something with lower multiplier, but I don't even I can't even recall what champion would. Yeah, we we'll are already killed one third to it. Probably we we're just like almost done with destroying it by the time that it ends, so it probably won't be relevant to brute force it, but I think we won. It's just a waiting game, but we'll win eventually. It's time to get the summer grind going and see how far we can get. Like, lately, even though nothing has really changed, but on the last few sessions that I've done, I've gotten more points than normal. It's not like I get 15 wins in a row, but I do win I do gain good amount of points every time, so even though we're not really doing better than before, but there is some progression. Con considering how Biohack doesn't get doesn't get depressed by losing all the time and still, you know, gets a lot higher because he's very active. It's not like like I could do it as well. I just need to actually play the game every day like I used to, or not the game, but live arena. Wait, maybe... Mm, I guess it doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe I should have just... Maybe done A1 or A2. And just let the Uncle re revive Rotos, but I don't think it matters. I don't think we can can really lose this battle, to be honest. It's kind of, you know, a little bit arrogant to say, but he doesn't have enough damage to kill us with the Tormin. That's that's the kind of things that I often struggle against my enemies with, but I can already tell that he he won't be able to kill me. Not even if he <laughs> even if he really wants to. Oh, he actually just gave up the battle. Okay, let's see what Reddit is thinking about the update. Okay, maybe there is gonna be mixed response, we'll, we'll see about it. I hope you guys are happy about it, I mean, you would hope that the people that are... Again, it's the exact same team. You would hope that the people that are most in the PvP would be happy with this update. And if you guys are not, then I guess nobody will. Okay, this time we're just gonna go with the UDK instead of the Stalos. I already know I'm not gonna have enough damage, so... Okay, let's see this thread. Siege looks not so interesting. The past updates have been fairly good, with epic empowerment, more gear slots and so on. I think those updates could have been way better. I wasn't really that happy about the tavern update. I felt like they just did it to say that they did it, 
but the tavern update doesn't actually make um, like leveling up champions any easier because you you know you have to level them up to like level 18 so that you gain the most points for champion trading tournaments and so on and there's actually no mechanics to do it so it doesn't really really make it any easier for me I still have to manually click countless of times to to, to use the like rare champions and so on but I don't know about this one it seems they combined elements of arena game modes CVC and Hydra Crush all in one single game mode the worst of those those new videos they released are disgusting and make me not want to play it because it's a, just another time sinking game mode where the best rewards are 5 to 6 tiers higher or hidden behind a paywall. A feature that has been on a lot of people's wish list, the guy said in the first video. What? Bro, what about stage 25 Minotaur? I, I don't know why Why would you want stage 25 Minotaur? I don't think that makes any difference. It's kind of a random factoid that I, I've said before that sometimes people either never heard before and are surprised and some people get a little bit annoyed by it but just so you know they literally doubled the scrolls that Minotaur drops at one point of the game when I started playing the game it took you like four to six months to get masteries on your first champion you couldn't buy them with gems you got half of the scrolls from Minotaur people were farming stage 13 because 15 was too hard there was only five star uh, items in the game and you got way less energy so okay, we'll revi revisit this thread after this battle but you know I don't think Minotaur is super relevant you don't need to get every champ oh, okay instant loss I don't think you need to get every champion in um yeah we're, we're like locked out and stunned and like 15 different things locked out taunted and soon slept and okay Anyway, moving on to the next one. Maybe that's good. We, we can focus on the ready thread. But yeah, I don't think giving more scrolls from Minotaur doesn't really do it for me. I don't really care about it. And most of my champions don't have masteries. You don't really need it. It's kind of a waste to do it on all of the random champions. As far as... Um, like where he says it seems they combined elements of different game modes i said this multiple times before that basically all of that and you know somebody's gonna get mad here again but basically all of the updates that we got this year with the new content they're literally copied from watch your friends which i literally mentioned i made videos saying that why watch your friends is, is much more user friendly it basically has all of the same systems for like like gear and champions and so on pretty much but the combat is like different and it's probably better combat combat for pve but the pvp kind of sucks in that game and it's not really even a thing to be honest that's why some of the things you can't really fully hmm, you can't really fully copy from watch of realms to raid but stuff like tavern update and so on you can totally do it so again, like item swapping, the tavern update, all of these things are in Watch Your Realms. I have been asking for them in the CC chat from like since last year, mentioned it many times and other CCs have mentioned them as well. I think it's totally possible that they literally implemented it because we were we were asking about those specific things from them so many times. But um, and this clan wars is literally also in Watch Your Realms, just so you know, but because the mechanics in that game are a little bit different in combat and the environment or the map layout affects the battles a lot, that's why I kind of thought that you can do it as well in Raid. Hmm. If I go with Dutch, I'm gonna go for the Narciss ban again. Yeah, that, that's why I was kind of skeptical when we found, found out about the siege, because I knew that, okay, it's again from Watch of uh, Knishak. It's once again from Watch of Realms. 
but I wanted to see the full details before really talking about it because you know they could affect they could add all kinds of mechanics to add nuance to it, which it seems like they did because you can customize the room, and that's basically like a raid version of how how Watch or Realm does it to be honest because in that game you like you don't use the top arena teams in the clan wars you, you use um there's different strategies because the map layout is different than in pvp or, or in the normal pvp game mode and that's why there's some people use some random weird epic champions because they really work well in some specific map and so on and i guess that's basically what raid is trying to do with those uh like buffs and effects and since you can choose them yourself and people can customize their own room that they defend i think it sounds super good but we will really find out about it in practice i think we just lost i don't think my can my judges take maybe he maybe he can actually or maybe she can yeah he doesn't have a second nuker so i think my judges is good Wait, why did the bombs not already proc? Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. I thought this was gonna be a super hard one, but it was actually an easy one. Maybe was a little bit distracted by talking about the clan wars or whatever we're gonna call it. Siege battles, clan wars, whatever. But I think that's gonna be the new thing, so we're gonna talk about it a lot in the next couple of weeks. Oh, I already thought I won and I was like outdoing the battle and looks like that wasn't the way to go. We're still gonna get the Wukong back, so it should be good. Okay, come on. I've, I've had bad experiences in the past by getting mass amount of weak hits and hooker. Okay, we did it. Nice. So yeah, so far it actually kind of seems good to me, but I'm not surprised that I'm more into clan wars than Reddit, and we will really see after we get the first battles, but I'm not as skeptical or not skeptical. I'm not as negative about the update as these guys yet at least. And I think this is actually like much less paid to win than it could have been, to, to be fair. Also, it would be super cool if there was like, since you can make those specific faction restrictions, would be nice if they could make, if it would be a possibility to make epic only rooms. I'm almost certain that's not going to be a thing, because that probably would be very cheesable, that you're not going to have like champions to make like skin walkers epic only like pvp team and if somebody has that and they can make those restrictions nobody can really fight them in that so i don't think barium would do it but it would be almost cool if they if something like that could do or may, maybe to lesser extent okay but what i'm checking if you can see let me move myself here oh fuck Okay, so let's let's see what the comments think about it. Seems like a lot of a lot to do in a game that already has a lot to do. From my understanding, it's even though the mechanics are kind of complex on paper, which I like that there's like nuance and strategy, hopefully, potentially. <laughs> How many people have picked the exact same setup against me? Okay, this is starting to trigger me a little bit. It's so... Everybody knows. I, I complain about my champions every time, but you see why I complain about it. I literally meet the, every, the same first three picks, like, I don't know, five battles in a row, because everybody knows what I can't beat. No, not that this is the only thing that I can't beat, but this is like, I guess, a very basic version of how to do it. But back to what this guy was saying, that it's there's a lot of things to do in the game. There's a lot of 
strategy and nuance to it but from what i've understood like the clan leaders and officers can kind of set up many things and the clan members don't really have to do a lot more than just do a couple battles like i guess daily for a couple days in a week assuming it's a weekly thing might be bi-weekly but it's certainly gonna be way less grind than something like tag team arena where where you have to do like 20 battles every day Okay, I'm almost giving up on this battle too. I don't think we can do this either. I still don't have Marius, but I'm kind of getting closer to it, but I wasn't one of the first, not, not even close. Definitely expect to see videos with him in the future. I'm not even saying near future, it's probably still gonna take me like a couple weeks, but soon-ish. I was thinking if I should just A2 the CIFI since it's much higher max HP, but I kind of do need to. I might get enfeebled and Rotos is gonna die. I kind of want to, like, you know, kill the Maris if I can. But Harima passive is OP. <laughs> If I get, like, you know, enfeeble, it's just gonna screw me. I guess other things too, but, um... And I'm locked out. <laughs> Fuck. Mario's passive was enough to... Or the A1 from the passive proc was enough to finish Mikage before <laughs> I switched the form. I guess we lost. I'm locked out too, so... Not like I'm gonna... I don't think I can get off a rev, rev live before I die. I see if he passive too. <laughs> Super strong. He heals on every, every turn, does add, add up over time a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay, buddy, I, I guess we lost it. Not nothing really I could have <laughs> could have done about that, so other than to get like polymorph procs or weak hit on Crixia's lockout and so on. There was a possibility to win it, but it was just down to RNG and would have been with the same team. Yeah, I kind of agree with this comment. It looks like not enough rewards for the time taken and that it's a new mod. Well, we don't know the rewards yet. Like they showed the item set, but they didn't. They just showed a picture of it. We don't know what the item set does. And like I mentioned earlier, earlier on on the video, the item set has to be good. If the item set sucks, it's really gonna kill the content. Since it kind of seems like that's the only, only good reward from it. Hmm. Again, they got the nurses.
I wonder. He's definitely going to be either Rodos or Wukong. He might even be both of them. Let me find you the... Um, picture. The end reward screen is exactly like it is in... Um, Clan Wars, you get like a chest that gives you a couple of um, accessories or artifacts. We don't really know. I think that's that might be not just accessories, but both of them. Hmm. Not sure if I want to pick Wukong against the Taros. So maybe maybe we're just gonna ban it. We'll see. Okay, can I find it here quickly? Okay, there. So as you can see, you got... Those... Is that the shield or banner? I guess that's a banner, so... It's only accessories in this picture. I don't know if it's gonna be accessory only set, or... Is it gonna be both accessories and artifacts? But there is some... Some item set. And then, um... Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna go for the Taros banner, I think. We don't have bolster this time. But yeah, the rewards here are, and I this is I'm sure this is not like the best possible reward since it's only epic. But and I'm sure you can get like six star and mythical and so on. But it's the new item set, Chaos or then some like fragments for mythical champions and so on. That's about it. Basically the same rewards as on Hydra. Not not that insane rewards, but I think it's not also going to be that much. It's probably going to be less work for an average player than Hydra is weekly, assuming that you don't like auto every single Hydra battle. But it might not be that big, um, big part of the game. I was kind of spe speculating that I thought they were going to release the Clan Wars towards the end of the year. Because that's always when they bring out some new big content. Okay, let's let's open with the A2 actually and not A3. Just because it's gonna... Oh, he has Maritzka, fuck. It will reduce the... Well, it's still gonna reduce the Narcissus damage a lot, but she can just cleanse it. But usually there's some big update towards the end of the year. In the past it has been stuff like... Um, blessing update... Uh, empowerment a bunch of things every time like towards the end of the year like on the fall season there's some very big update and i was kind of surprised that we get i thought that's when we were gonna get the clan wars so maybe there's gonna be some other bigger update later this year this is probably not gonna be the main main content we even get and maybe it's like on the smaller scale actually it doesn't actually seem that big part of the game, even though some people in the Reddit comments were kind of saying that. Okay, nice. I think in this battle we're good, for sure. Mary's got passive with combined with another reviver like Sifi, or mainly just Sifi since she re revives with full turn meter. For some champions it's kind of impossible to deal with, but when Rodos gets the extra turn on the A3, it is not that bad actually. Some champions, even with a lot of AoE, they still can't kill through that combination unless you have like lockout or some other things than just damage. But yeah, Rodos can do it. And I think they said something like there will be, now that I think about it, they did say, I think on the video, that there's going to be some new updates on the Clan Wars later on. So this is not going to be like everything. They, they will add stuff to it. Okay, this time he picked something different than 
got the same tree first pick that everybody did so far. I think we're just gonna go with Ankara and Narcissus, and maybe Duchess later on. We'll see. Okay, I agree with this guy say, saying like, now we're having debate how much time it does. It looks like it takes a lot of time, full clan, and the rewards are not good, and seems bad on arrival. And then this other guy is retarding that... Ah, uh, give me a sec. Uh, yeah, that, that's just Rotos. You are wrong, 6 to 12 fights versus AI over 2 days is not a lot of time. CVC has the same issue with not being at max members. Only the lowest tier get the 5 star epics. Mm, I think we're gonna go for Georgie Pan. Okay, I guess that's basically what that yeah, guy was saying. The red dress is kind of situational. But yeah, I don't think this content will actually be that time-consuming. Maybe for the clan leader. <laughs> it might be a little bit time-consuming for me, but... Um, we have actually been working working on, on my clan lately, and now there's a couple other, other officers in the clan, not just me, so it will be interesting. There's actually... I don't know if I should say it yet. I don't think there's any reason to like i don't think i can say it but maybe i'll just say it <laughs> say it when he joins but we we have another content creator joining the clan after the hydra class so but apart from him there is multiple other people now <laughs> now in the clan taking part in that stuff and it's not just up to me to make our decisions about the clan wars Speaking of clan shilling, there's still one spot. We have two people joining tomorrow after the Hydra class, but there's still one spot because we had one person quitting, so... Not two people quitting, yeah. N not, not just the clan, but the game, so... But we're trying to be super uh, try hard on it, but if possible, maybe we will try to play it um, smart as well, and if there's ways to cheese it and get wins every time and avoid the big boy plans and so on, we might consider those options. We kind of have to see how it works, actually. And our original plan was to do those clan, clan hopping for Hydra CVC. This is gonna complicate it a lot because I think you get like levels on your buildings that I think like, um, you keep in the future. We will see how doable that is. The thing is that um, it all really comes down to the rewards if the new item set is good. Because you also do get those clan trophies. I don't really care about the number of trophies, so I wouldn't mind switching clans. If we can get win every time and get better, better rewards. But if the rewards suck, then it doesn't matter either way. In that case, the trophies might be bigger rewards for some people than the actual items. And I wouldn't put it past them that the item set is not really that good. If I re revive the Armands now, it's just gonna die. I wouldn't put it past them that the, even if the set maybe is good, maybe it's good for Hydra or PvE, and not PvP. That's kind of a weird thing that nice we survived. That raid has done with a lot of content, like from the Hydra rewards, for instance. Like you know, stone skin is used for PvP, not for PvE at all. I guess protection is used a little bit in the Tranda teams and so on. But basically, you use the Hydra rewards for PvP. It totally could be that the, the rewards for the sieges are not going to be relevant in the PvP either. 
I hope not. I hope it's relevant for PvP, but who knows. I hope it's since it's a new set and it's not Swift Parry or... Well, I guess technically, I mean, they could make an accessory set that you can like substitute for other other sets as accessory. That would be super interesting mechanic. I don't think it's gonna be that. <laughs> I feel like they would have talked about it a lot more if that were to be the case. Wait, now, now I kind of lost my train of thought. What I was gonna say originally. Anyway. We, we need to find out the set. Th then we can talk about it more when we actually know what the set does. I'm kind of getting pummeled here. There's so much like lockout and lockout depths that I'm not really getting any turns on Rotos. If I just got some turns, I could totally kill him, but I think we lost. I'm just not able to, like, take, a, take any turns on my Rotos. No, it's like a double lockout in a speed team, and Taras has bonkers damage. Even if we get extra turn here, I don't think that's gonna be good enough. Nah. I think that's it. Well, he doesn't have a lot of buffs, so... Uh, it's enough, it's enough. If he has Taras AoE now, I think he does. Yeah, no, that's surviving, barely. Okay, let's not get the weak hit here. Ah, of course. No, no, it's not the weak, it's the passive. OP passive. You don't even need to be tanky, you just survive it every time. Wait, I think we have the... Yeah, I think we have the revive. So we're still not out of the picture. We barely, barely took a turn just before the lockout. Yeah, there's no... There's no way we're gonna win it though, because we're... We're perma-locked out. Would have needed to get some early polymorph on uh, Galatir or maybe even Taras. Okay, that that's it. We we don't have re revival yet. Up and even if we get a turn, even if we did get it, I don't think that will save us. But we don't have it. I think we need to wait one more turn for it, and we're not gonna get. We're not gonna get the second turn. No, we okay. We need to wait two turns. But, if we bring it back to the clan wars, I think if I had a battle with this guy and I can make it about specific faction or whatever rules that I decide, I definitely have much better chance at winning against him, so it doesn't sound bad at all. Oh, why, why did it open on that screen? It wasn't supposed... Oh, no, it's because of the Reddit tab. Never mind. I tried to set it up so that all of my tabs open in, in another screen and not the main one. Okay, so there's a video and then there's also text format about the stuff. I didn't see the boss they made about the text. I guess we'll talk about it later. 
Okay, there's no, yeah, that's just the new champions. There's no other information about it. But yeah, let me let me know in comments what how do you feel about this? Like b before we actually get the first plan wars, which I think is literally gonna be today. But how do you feel about it right now before you have actually exper experienced the clan wars? Am I being too uh, positive about it or or not? Damn, he has a lot of empire. <laughs> Holy moly, he has a lot of empowerment, but it kind of looks like a doable matchup, honestly. Which, which, I don't think we want to go with the Dutchess here. We could even go with Mikage, to be honest. Maybe I'll go with Mikage and no Reviver at all. That would be kind of risky, but... Mm, no, let's just go with... Um, Mingaki would be good to get rid of the bus, so the Taras AoE does less damage, but let's just go with Angora. Angora has the high turn meter revive, and we're gonna need that. Obviously, Darts' revive is not gonna do anything against that guy, unless we also have like Lockout or something else, and he's gonna go first before me, of course, and Probably still ban Armands anyway, so... A um, little bit surprised that he picked Siegfried against UDK. You went with Triple Nooker. I mean, I guess Siegfried is technically a reviver too. Maybe he's planning to actually ban the UDK and not Armands. I think he might actually ban the UDK, but just in case he doesn't ban it, I'm gonna go for a George ban, who could ignore the stone skin and one shot the UDK, but I hope he doesn't I hope he still goes for Armands ban and not, not UDK. Okay, yeah. Okay, then then that was the right decision. Also, I'll probably make a, oh, I don't know if that's that's like a bug or did he just decide to surrender because he saw that I I banned the charge. It I'm not sure. I'll probably make a separate video about the Plan Wars Reward Champion too. Like the TLDR version is that I don't I don't think it's that big deal. I think some some whales who are super fast and already use speed teams, it might be okay for them in some situations, but I don't have like super super high expectations for it and I don't think it's gonna be relevant for most people. Kind of like the um what what do you call it? Kind of like the champion from Gear City. Mika mm, and Harimo. I do think though that even though I complain that my 
Staldos doesn't have enough damage. I think in those matchups where I kind of want to use Staldos, probably with Marios it, it would be better. He's also still not tanky though, that's kind of issue, but I think he will do better in those matchups and maybe I will use Rotos and Wukong a little bit less after I get Marius. I think in this battle we might go with Wukong instead of Rotos maybe. Wait, he still hasn't... Maybe I could go with Helicat. He hasn't picked the second nuker. Helicat could be good, assuming that he doesn't have Lazarus. But he on, he doesn't... He didn't pick any primal so far. I'm just gonna... Assume that this guy is not... Not whaley enough to have... Have... Um, Lazarus. Okay, Siegfried. That's fine. I then then we have really good matchup in this battle. We're still gonna go for Harmopan and not Mika. I kind of thought about it, but now let, let's do it this way. He can get polymorphed. We're still gonna get the defense buff, even if he even if she removes the block damage, it's not gonna be totally useless. And Helicat is gonna be a little bit interesting. Otherwise, my Wukong wouldn't really have done anything. Now we can kind of try to brute force through the UDK with Wukong. Maybe get Polymorph. Probably I don't have enough accuracy, but we might just do damage to kill it. I think, uh, yeah, he goes first, good. If Mikaki gets polymorphed now, I think... I think we're done with the battle. <laughs> Come on, get polymorphed, okay, no. But we still have the defense buff, as you can see. If Siegfried doesn't proc Helm Smasher, then we're, we're still safe at, at this point. Wait, how did did it already get the stun back? I get did he did he get the Angora proc on it? Okay, see. My dots is trying get that pretty well with the defense buff. I think we're good. Wait we, and I'm not even sure which one I should do. I guess yeah, I guess we'll There's still a stone skin left, so we'll have to wait for it. Damn. Narsus hasn't gotten a single turn in the battle so far. And he's still not gonna. Wait, he's already stunned and he's getting stunned for the second time. Now I'm just getting screwed. Come on. At least let me get one turn on Narsus. I'm not even getting locked out, I'm just getting stunned a trillion times in a row. I guess, you know, this is why I pick UDK even though sometimes you kind of forget about how impactful he is in the fights, but not getting slept by Mikage A1 or Sifi A1 is pretty big deal oftentimes. Maybe not always, but pretty often. 
if we got like one turn there on Narsus, like we lit that that was literally all we needed. One turn on Narsus. Yeah, no, no, it's over. Okay, fair enough. How is the record looking? Probably a lot, well, definitely a lot worse than yesterday. I guess we're yeah, we're something like 50-50. We're not, we're not really getting a massive, massive win streak today. Damn, literally 50-50 in the battle log. Of course, the yesterday's video was screwed because <laughs> we gained like 40 to 50 points on that session. He opened with CV pick, even though he's the first uh, first pick. It happened to me a couple times against somebody that I wasn't like paying attention, and he was opening with the CV pick, and I thought he got the Armands every time since he had the first pick, and I didn't pick Armands, and then he got Armands on the second second uh, choice or second turn. I, yeah, I probably have to pick the UDK, otherwise he's gonna pick it, probably, yeah. I guess we're just gonna go without any reviver in, in this battle. Might not be the best choice, to be honest. Oh, Tor Tormin and Gaius, he's really doubling down on our necessi necessity to, to necessity to have some kind of revivers. Now I kind of regret not having Dutchess instead of UDK. What about if we ban the Sifi? Maybe maybe Mikake is the fastest champion after his warlord. And uh, may maybe I can stun everybody. I mean Probably Gaius at least is in stone skin, but maybe I can do something with Mikage before they get the turn. I mean, all of the Nukers might be in stone skin, assuming that he has the pieces of it. That's okay, yeah, that's kind of the meta. But it, it was like I guessed that at least Gaius has to be in it. He doesn't have attack buff. I think I feel like, and it's not like instant. He doesn't have another ability to instantly kill us. I think I think we're good. Yeah, R Rodos is gonna get the turn. Maybe okay. Maybe we're not good. Everybody else is left though. Okay, we're yeah, we're good, we're good. Okay, no attack buff. Uh, maybe not. If I don't kill the Wukong here, I'm gonna. Yeah, I have to kill the Wukong. Maybe I can get uh, get Mika get sleep before the next Wukong turn. No. Not looking super great at this point. Wait, uh, yeah, Wukong is gonna get a turn before Nars. I think we lost it. Yeah, kind of close-ish, but not close enough. I hope you guys are having better time than me on Live Arena today. But may maybe you are too distracted by the clan wars and you don't even have time to think about or 
play live arena. That I think that's probably gonna be the case for out of class today. Interesting first two picks. <laughs> it feels like he's using the same kind of champion pool as me. Probably gonna go with like Rodos and UDK next, and maybe he doesn't have the white duo, but um, probably. I mean, I already got the armor, so I feel like he wants to ban the Narthus, but probably he can't do it. And Who do I want to pick? Let's go. Let's just go with Mika again. Maybe, maybe I could have just gone with the Ankara, but probably I might even consider just actually going with Staldos against the Duchess on this battle. Yeah, okay. Double Reviver. He still has to pick a Nuka. I think we're just gonna go with Staldos and ban the Duchess, maybe. Maybe not. I mean, we have Narsus and he can't ban it. I think, yeah, we're just gonna go with Staldos though. Probably not gonna ban the dots, as we'll see what he picks. And what do we want as the last one? Helicat? Maybe I. Hmm. Maybe I'll ban the Rotos and go with Helicat. Since he already picked my main rewires. He doesn't even have lockout, so I could ban anybody. He, he has to pick an ogre now. Yeah, let's go with this. Again. <laughs> Hoping that he doesn't have Lazarus. I mean, Wuk he might, he's probably gonna pick Wukong, and Wukong is gonna be pretty good, but... W would we go with the Wukong? Oh, Harima. Uh, let me think about it. Rodos can kill Helicat through the block damage, but we're still gonna have it at the start of the battle. It's still gonna be useful, even without Reviver. I think we're just gonna go for the Harima ban, so we can actually deal damage. What? I wasn't expecting him to ban the Narsus. I understand why he wants to ban, ban it, but... Armand is OP. <laughs> I don't know if he's, uh, if he's prepared for this. We should be good. I mean, I'm just gonna pull him off the Rotos at the start of the battle, and... Yeah. It seems like he had Duchess that is faster than my Armands that could put the Whale up, so I think we're good. Did we open with, with the ally attack? Yeah, let, let's do it. Might as well put some damage on the UDK. Oh, actually, actually almost killed it because we removed the stone skin before. This is kind of weird matchup, but had <laughs> had to do with it. It made sense, even though it might might look super dumb and weird on paper. But you know, I've been complaining about the entire video that I want more stuff, like everybody does. And when you don't have everything, then you you have to do sometimes weird stuff that you don't you don't see the other big boys using all the time. I'm sure this is one of those matchups that probably probably there has never been this exact same battle that one team has the set setup that I, I have and the other team has the setup that he does because um my team is my team is very weird. Not not the meta stuff. Okay, we got Polymorph, it's not great, but I don't 
I don't know if that even matters anymore. We're still gonna move before Rodos on the Staldos. Yeah, I mean, it, it would have been better, of course, if we didn't get Polymorph, but I don't think that's gonna cause us the battle. Armand is just so OP. I mean, sometimes people ask, that, why do I ban Armand's every battle? I mean, you kind of need to, unless you know that you're faster and you can Perma. Perma sees it enemy Armand's, but, you know, it's not like you can just... O opt out to ban their Harma or UDK or something else instead of the Harmons. Yeah, we need to kill the Rotos to like play it safe here. If Rotos gets like any turns, he's gonna. Heads are gonna start to roll in our team. We, we can't let that happen. It's, you know. Obviously, Staldos damage is not... We're not one-shotting the enemy team, like something like Lazarus would do. But um, since we have the CC from Armands, we can we can definitely kill them. That That's not the issue in this battle. Yeah, <laughs> next, next time he's gonna ban Armands, I'm telling you. I understand. I have been there, I'm sure all of us have, but it's not like you can just <laughs> you can just decide to not ban the Armands, eh? even if he really wanted to get rid of my Narses in that matchup. Well, we had two two losses in a row, so we <laughs> we needed to win anyway. Was there anything else going on on the reddit i know some people <laughs> some people don't care about about the reddit at all but you know it's kind of interesting to see see their perspective there Again, how many times have we seen the exact same tree picks in this video? I think it's like 10 times at this point. Almost every every player and I think the first five battles or something like that, everybody picked the same setup every time. And we still don't have a solution to it, but... Yeah, I... Mm. Well, we're gonna save the Nougar as the last. No, we can't do it. We're, we're just gonna go with Stalos if we have to, but I'm not gonna pick UDK. I kind of... I mean, it's good against Sifi, but I really want to have some more offensive. Like, I think it's a downhill battle. We're probably gonna lose. Oh, UDK would, <laughs> would have been super good against the Sigron. We're probably gonna lose, so we're gonna take some risks anyway. Like it would be kind of tempting for me to ban the CV here too and let me let him have the Armands, but obviously that's not an option. Nah. One shot. We had triple reaction, but it did it, it didn't really help us there. Okay, can we can we at least buff strip everybody? Maybe we can get lucky too, and we can get rid of the stone skin on Harimo. What? 
I didn't even know that's a thing. We we could treat off the other boss, but not the stone skin. Yeah. Huh? Am I am I dumb or I, I'm so confused now? Ah. How much life harvest he has? Two champions in it and both have high level blessing. Surely we still have enough damage to kill the Zeke from at least. Definitely not Harima, but... Okay, <laughs> holy moly. With the Harima passive and life harvest, we we didn't even have enough damage to kill the Zeke from. Not even close. I thought I thought it would be close, but I thought we could do it, but it's not. it wasn't even a little bit close. Yeah. Harima passive is, is super OP. It is what it is. Okay, back to um, back to Reddit. So, okay, we we saw this thread, but is there any other threads about the content? Okay, this question probably most people watching this video <laughs> know the answer to. But obviously the answer here is that these teams don't take any turns and that's that's how they get it. I guess the turns on the waves don't count for the actual battle, so... But yeah. Like the Urost passive. Passive poisons just kill the boss. Hmm. Fellhound is better than Bellover, but I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, he opened with three supports, so we can just go with Trotos and probably not UDK even when he has the Sifi. Maybe I'll go with Helicath. No, let's let's save the Helicath as the last pick. Let's go with yeah, let's go with Hugo. Let's go with. Maybe quadruple Nuker might be kind of doable against this team because um, Wukong has the passive and Helicat is gonna be in stone skin and maybe pulled out the block damage too. Hmm. Yeah, Gnishak is gonna kill us with the bomb stall. We c yeah, I can't go with the Helicat. I guess, yeah, it's actually kind of bad. I have seen this exact same comp before, by the way. It's kind of. Kind of rough. At least we have the. Polymorph on Rotos now instead of Bone Armor. I don't know if this is gonna be enough to do it though. Okay, no new threads about it. Maybe I'll make my own Reddit post today. <laughs> have, haven't been doing them in a while, like actual my own thread. Maybe maybe I'll do it after we get to play with that and have some interaction and talk with the Reddit. I need to I need to make more Reddit posts. I feel like it's kind of kind of fun fun to chat with them. Sometimes when I post in some random random thread, people like start um, start asking questions when they notice me. Often, often, you know, it's like, you know, 50-50, some people are mad and some people are too positive, but it's kind of interesting. Okay, uh... I'm not getting the extra turn, and everybody's gonna die to the bombs. Does it even make sense to... Oh, no, no, Necrot is not gonna die to the bombs. Let, let's just proc, proc revive the Ramanto. 
things we can do it. Doing the AOE no wouldn't wouldn't have been better than block reviving the Ramanto. Oh, 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 the bombs didn't have their duration reduced on Rota, so we can still get the turn. I, we just know way we're not gonna die to the bombs. I should just do the A3. Even if we increase the HP, yeah, we would have died. I think we got this. Even though Necrot is super out of meta, and I think I maybe down geared my Necrot a little bit, but you know, he still has fairly high HP, so he can sometimes tank the bombs and so on. Okay, we're good. 30 minutes left. If we get four four wins in a row, we could get to 5.5k, but probably not. Wait, isn't this the same guy? I feel like it's the exact same person that we just fought. Oh, he's still... He, I guess he's always going with some kind of speed team. He's probably... Probably very fast, I guess. What do I want to pick? If he doesn't go with the bombs, Angora probably would be better than Dutchess. But if he does, I still want to get the Polymorph. Oh, he took the Wukong. Interesting. He went with the traditional Mikage Wukong team comp, and we can ban whoever we want. He still has to pick Nuker. Um, hmm. Can't go with Helicat though, he has double. Wait, can we use Tormin? We could totally go with Tormin here. Darwin and who else? I'm gonna ban the Sifi. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna have double Nuker. He, he can't ban the Armands, I don't think so. We don't really need to go with Mitral. Let's just go with Ankara. And we'll basically <laughs> ban whoever he picks as the last one. I'm sure it's gonna be... Yeah, okay. We're, we're gonna ban the Knishark, I think, right? Or do we? No, no, no. We still go for the CV. What? He actually... <laughs> this is the second time on this video that the enemy team lets us have the Armans. But since we banned the CV, I don't think it's gonna be easy. I'm assuming that even in Swift Parry, the Arbiter is probably gonna be faster. But surely we're still gonna go before Knishark. No? Yes. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, this... May maybe bad? I think, yeah, okay, maybe it's really bad. No, okay, we're good. He got polymorphed, he doesn't have attack buff, the bombs are gonna do less damage and the duration of them wasn't decreased. So at this point, we're, we're good. Maybe it would have been safer option to... um. Do I want to use the revile? The polymorph to Wukong, that, that might have been a choice. I feel like Angora is gonna survive it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I forgot that he didn't... He got polymorphed and the skill was interrupted. He didn't decrease the duration of the... Um, of the bombs. L let's do A2 instead of A3. 
Wukong is stunned and we don't really need to kill it. Wait, why was it removed? Okay, we'll just polymorph it. Oh yeah, it's the it's the Mikage passive on that form, I kind of forgot about it. Usually Mikage is always on the second form and you forget that she has two different passives. That passive is actually quite good, it's just... It's very rarely used, ever. I guess I should have done the AoE noob in, in that case. Maybe? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's good. Yeah, now we can kill the Gneeshark. Maybe this is still good. The A1 might not have killed the Gneeshark at that point. He, he still has the Wukong passive, but surely we won the battle at this point. Come on. Uh. Oh, Tormin, Tormin passive OP. So it's 50% chance every time Wukong gets revived that he gets frozen. Isn't it 50? Uh, okay, I have to double check. It's not 50. I think it's less than that. We had 30% chance. Okay, three more wins, it's kind of doable. If we get three more wins, we could get live arena chest dude, so let's do it. <laughs> Would be good end, end for the video if, if we could get that done. Surely not though. Okay, not the best start, he got the first pick, but surely we're not gonna get first pick three battles in a row. Okay, we're both we're both doing fa fast picks too. Do I want to go with Wukong against double double magic affinity? Probably not. St Staldus gets gets some play again, even though I really hate him. But we're going with Staldus. Staldus, I choose you. <laughs> Very, very regrettably, but I'll have to do it. Maybe we'll go with Necrot too, instead of a Reviver. Uh, against Harima. Okay, to be fair, now we can't go with Reviver even if we want to, so maybe, maybe I should have picked Dutchess before Staldus. Or should I just go with Helicat? We, okay, we have the UDK. I think he's gonna ban the UDK though, but let's go with Helicat. We technically have triple Nuker. I don't think he's even gonna ban one of them. Oh, he did? He went for Helicat ban. Interesting. That's kind of good. Then, then the Helicat pick was was good choice because I'm kind of surprised that he let us have the UDK. He still has the Harima, obviously. He can deal damage, but um, Rotos can't do anything. I think we're just gonna open with the ally attack instead of instantly switching the form. Can we can we kill the Harima? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Oh, we got the taunt on UDK. Nice. He probably had a lot, a lot reaction. I saw a lot of procs there, which which makes sense. I'm sure he wish he would have stone skin instead of reaction. It's really almost never anybody's choice to use reaction instead of stone skin. Usually, you would 
almost always go with stone skin. If you have the options. Let's, let's do the A2 before we go to the second form. They're both in stone skin anyway, so might as well do this. If we want to get to 5k, assuming that we win this, which is certainly not guaranteed, but we kind of want to do a fast battle too. We need to, we need to speed run this if we want to get to 4k. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. We killed the Harima with the passive proc, and now we even healed the team to full with. We hit UDK, uh, UDK passive, that's pretty cool. And yeah, we still have the UDK against Roto, so he can't really do much. He's getting double assist. Okay, nice. Can't, can't believe, can't believe that we won that, <laughs> won that team so easily with like triple nuke, right? We had that one battle with quad, quad triple nuke too, but that didn't go so well. Okay, two more wins. 17 minutes time, need two wins, it's doable, but one battle could take 17 minutes. But chances are that, like, because we don't need to end the second battle during that time, we just need to do one battle in less than 17 minutes, and of course win it, and then we can queue for a second one, so still doable. get Rodos UDK and Angora, but we can only pick two out of those three, and it's very likely that whatever I don't pick out of them, he's gonna pick, so... I think we'll go with these two and save the nuclear till the end. I hope he doesn't have Harma. I feel like if he doesn't have Harma, then it's doable. If he does, it's probably probably game over already. Ah, Marius and Grixia, and he could still have Harma, but probably he's gonna pick like a Sifi or something like that. So, mm, but yeah, we're still gonna go with them. I mean. It's not like we're gonna pick anybody else. Wukong might just die and lose the NV pool and actually get to do damage that way against Marius. And Grixia may weak it on Rotos, so it's actually not that bad. Of course, Narcissus can ignore Rotos passive and so on, but we are in 4P stone skin. And if we get to do like 1A2 on Narsus, it's gonna reduce his damage by a lot, and at that point, he's not even gonna kill our our Rotos from with the A2 from full health. <sighs> okay, Elva, that's not the worst at all. Should we ban Mikake or Grixia or one of the new girls? I'm almost tempted to go for like. A Mario span, but I think we're gonna still go with Grixia. Yeah. Nah, let's 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 try to play the odds and oh, he banned Rotos. Okay, that's not good. That was a mistake. Should have banned Grixia. Yeah. Ah, now I'm now I'm regretting this. 
I'm pretty sure his Grixia is faster than my Armans. I was playing the odds that Grixia could weak hit on Rotos and Ankara, but I didn't expect him to ban Rotos. I, I, I think we, <laughs> I think we screwed this one up. Oh, I'm faster. Okay, he's not that fast. Who do we want to get rid of? Wait, we can do double turn. There's a very high possibility that I don't have enough accuracy to polymorph the Quixia. I think we're just gonna play play the safe route and oh maybe I would have and go for the Mikage. I was thinking that since the Quixia wasn't that fast, it probably has then high resistance, but I guess not. <laughs> he got frozen by the frostbite to be said. Okay, come on. Reduce the Wukong A2. But we will instantly win if, if that happens. No? Okay, but we did it on Armals. That's that's not bad either. Okay, I, I guess it's pretty much over at this point. We don't even have to use the A3 just yet. Let's save it for one turn. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> Arma Wait, is this like the third battle on this video where the enemy doesn't ban our Armans? I'm pretty sure it's something like that. He's, um. If you don't ban him, then, you know. You will. <laughs> You will not live to regret it, you're, you're gonna lose the battle. Oh, okay. That polymorph wasn't good though. That gives him some time to lock us out again with Grixia and maybe we can still lose. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Ah, okay. Never mind the... the Life, har life harvest was too, too strong. Like, holy moly, Armand is so OP. He's not even just like a little bit OP, but he's. He's actually, he's actually so bastard. Damn. Yeah, the, our nuker is sitting in Polymorph for like 2000 years. Damn, maybe that one Polymorph actually cost us the battle. It's starting to look really bad. Now Mikage is back in the battle and he could do, yeah, he could do stuns or ally attacks and other stuff. Oh fuck. It would be, it would suck to lose this battle. We would have for sure won if, if Wukong didn't get polymorphed on the A, A3. But, Ar <laughs> Armand is keeping us in the battle. This is how I feel when I battle my enemies. I don't get to feel this overpowered very often. Okay, come on. Surely, surely we're good. Surely Wukong can get a couple turns now and end the battle. Nice, nice. And Wukong is pro protected by Ankara and uh, UDK anyway. <laughs> We're playing it extra safe. Okay. We want it. Now one more battle and we actually we actually might do the goal. 
the goal of 5,000 points. Nice. Okay. Massive, massive win streak at the end. But okay, not, not that massive, but a little bit win streak at the end. Ah, come on, let us queue. Stop, stop passing out Larium client. Just let me queue, okay, good. Oh, level 97. That that looks very juicy, but then he's CH he's in the CHQ and that is one of the like the top arena class, so he's probably stronger than your average level 97 of course. CHQ is kind of like the underdog arena clan that it's not like you know it's not on the level of uh, accounts and spending like IPR and MAD but they are like much more arena focused than other let's say top clans like let's say G and now that are not really like a top arena clan but CHQ is like they might not have as good accounts as um, GNL or other comparable clans but they are much more arena focused and like better in PvP <laughs> for sure not in CVC or Hydra class though I, I actually did, did very seriously think about joining CHQ, but I wanted to make my own clan. Probably if I didn't make my own clan, I would have joined CHQ, but I had I had pretty like, you know, strong opinions that I want to make my own one. Okay, what do we what do we do here? Okay, I have to go with the Mikage. I guess we'll go with Mikage and Rotos. He already picked three supports, so M Mikage can get turns against the lockout and Rotos might get weak hit by Krixia, yeah, so we have the best yeah okay. Obviously he has good account. If he's level 97 and this high raising, but uh, we definitely have a chance. It's gonna come down to RNG, and probably the odds are against us. But it's not. Um, it's not hopeless. UDK or Ankara? He still. Ha <sighs> Fuck. He still has like you know, buff strip on Greeks. I think I'll rather go with the Ankara. Maybe I. Well, wow, fuck. He banned Rodos. That's not good. Maybe I can get my cooldown reduced by the Ankara A1. Maybe, maybe he weak. Uh, yeah, maybe he weak hits against Ankara, and even if Narcissus dies, I can revive him with cooldowns. Those are the like um, ways we can win this battle. But we're definitely the underdog here, of course. He has like shoot. He basically has triple lockout. I mean, Chu Chen has lockout, Krixia has lockout, and. Uh, um, Lazarus has lockout, and then he even has basically double reviver with Siegfried and Lazarus, so it's actually like, you know, we're pretty pretty heavily um, outmatched here, but we do have like a couple win conditions. Okay, come on. Reduce the cooldowns of Narsus. No. Ah. Ah, it's uh, just this one battle and we would reach the fight. Oh, nice. We we tanked that. He he didn't. Oh, he didn't see my tank. That's just coming. Okay, wait. He's just one A2 and it's over. Yeah, it's over. Okay, nice. 
We got the 5,000 points. Nice. I wasn't expecting to see it today, especially since we didn't like dominate at the start. But we actually had a pretty strong, you know, we 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 went hard at the end and grinded it back to the not back to but all the way to 5.5k. Nice, it looks good. Okay, let's see what we get from the chest. D don't forget that both seal set and um, impulse set were buffed recently, and they were already pretty good. Like they were on the level that they were top tier adjacent, but not really the best. But now they are like best. Now they are li literal top tier. Okay, all of these sucks though, but. You don't want to sleep on these two sets. Like, Impulse is, you know, best to be set for speed right now. It gives you 12% speed, like speed set. But you also have a chance to reduce the cooldown of your skills, which is huge deal. And, you know, you could even have multiple. Like, you could have two Impulse sets and Protection or uh, Supersonic. So you, you could even have multiple of, of that, which even if you like even if you go first and you don't get locked out, but your skills are just used, even in those situations it's super good. But you could even use this in go second teams as filler to be set, and maybe you get your cooldowns back and win that way. And teal also is you know basically like a better version of crit damage set. At this point, this damage increase is good enough to make it kind of comparable to Cruel, though Cruel is still super good and a lot of, a lot of the times you still want to go with 4p Stone Skin and 4p Savage or Lethal, so I, I think Impulse is still, is still better than Seal, but both of them are very good sets. <laughs> Let's collect our um, our primal shards. I do like the fact that you you can get primal shards from live arena. Of course I wish the rewards were better, but I feel like if they didn't do that, people would play this game more even, even less than they do, so it's ex at least giving people like some decent incentive to play it. I don't think it's worth for most people to do this much live arena to get a couple extra primal shards per month. But, you know, those active hardcore PvP players, probably the people who are watching this video, for you it's probably a nice thing to get some rewards out of it. But yeah, that's where we're gonna call today's video. Actually a pretty, pretty positive session at the end, so I'm very content with this one, and I'm looking forward to getting, getting Mario soon, even though I'm still kind of behind as you can see and uh, probably there will be another video about plan wars today maybe even before i release this one but that's it have a nice day and see ya